Are we in the right angle? Okay, okay. So now, uh, should I should I greet them in French or? Okay. 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 I have a problem. I have a problem. So we welcome them. Okay, the people who are viewing us. This is my second interview with this young man because the other interview we did with him was really interesting and uh, I thought I should have another one with him but this time we are going to talk about something that is more interesting, something that touches all of us. Employment, unemployment and employability. Do you know how to say those things in French? Or... Oui. Eh. oui, merci beaucoup, Monsieur eh. Ben. <laughs> Yeah. Bonjour tout le monde, c'est Jabel ici. D'abord, je voudrais prendre cette opportunité de vous remercier pour avoir regardé la première vidéo que uh, nous avons fait avec M. Ben. Mm. Mais aussi aujourd'hui, on va discuter sur un autre sujet très important, particulièrement dans le cadre de Genèse. Mm. On va discuter pourquoi les personnes de Genèse ne rencontrent pas les expectations particulièrement dans les chambres d'employement aujourd'hui. Vous mmh. pouvez aussi être parti de ces émissions. Vous pouvez nous envoyer vos commentaires, particulièrement dans la section de réponse. Oui, yes, yes. je pense que on yes. y va. I hope they understood the French you used. Eh? Oui. Anyway, okay, what you're going to say is about unemployment and employability. These are two words that are very, very related. Yeah. Eh? So unemployment, employment, employability. A lot of young people here, we are in Makere right now, eh? Makere University. A lot of, when, when are they graduating? Are they graduating very soon? Yeah, January. Okay, January, yeah. they are graduating. So we are going to have a very big number of graduates coming out of university. Mm. They, are, they are done, they have papers, but then are they employable? What does it mean to be employable? You know what it means to be employable? Mm. Okubera employable mm. Mm? is to have the necessary the, ne the necessary um, requirements, requirements yeah. for skills. a particular job skills mm. whereby mm. it is not only about your paper. Mm. 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 Like, do you know it? Est-ce que tu as compris tout ce qu'on a uh, enseigné dans la classe? Did you learn what was taught in class? You see? So now the, that employability is what we're going to be discussing about. And then we realize now the style of employment changed, eh? mm. I think you notice, eh? yeah. I think you, you've, you've had a chance to, to, work, to, to work as mm. you, you're studying, so yes. you can see that a yeah. lot of things change. Yes. It is no longer about, do you have a paper? Mm -hmm. It is about, can you, can you do it? What you're saying you can do, can you do it? Don't show us your degree that you have it, mm. but can you do it well? It is more than having papers. Yeah, so that mm. is the employability. Yeah. So now, we are here, we are talking as the youth, who are looking for jobs because we are all still looking for jobs yeah. for a way to settle down yeah. and have a future. So yes. now this is something which is affecting all of us. Mm. But as we are talking about it, we need to know, we need to just share from our minds. Bichi, what is the problem? Why are many of our young people in Uganda unemployed? Mm. Mm? Mm. Why do you find, for example, at the airport in Entebbe, mm. every day when you go there, you find that there's a group of young people who are going out of the country. Mm? Mm. Young girls in the same clothes, same over hijab, they are going to, to uh, Saudi Arabia, to Dubai, all that. And there are, there are some of them among those ones who are educated, they have degrees, they have diplomas, but then they somehow cannot find jobs here. Mm. And yet, Uganda is one of the most entrepreneurial huh? how do they say mm. one of the most entrepreneurial countries in the world in the world that mm. means a lot of startups come up every day in uganda eh? yes. so that means that should be that should be like uh, that should mean that we shall we have jobs but then we don't have them mm. so where is where is the problem, is the problem? Okay. Bozibuchi, chechi tulemesa, okubera, nga, tufunemilimu, obanga, to be employed. Mm -hmm. We are so enterprising here. Yeah. It's like everyone has a small business somewhere. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Mm. So now we are going to be talking about that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe. 
Mm. Okay, particularly the number of issues. Mm. And for me, I'm going to start with number one, the mindset. Mm. The mindset is essentially, you know, how someone thinks. Because mm. mm. in Uganda, mm. you have a number of youth. Mm. Once they get into the job market, mm. they expect it to be utopia. Mm. Like everything is perfect in the mm. job market. Mm. And yet the reality is a little bit different from what they do think. Initially, mm. before joining the job market, mm. for example... Once someone finishes university, mm. they expect they are going to land a job which is going to pay them three to five million per month. Yeah. But let us face the truth. I don't know of any employer who is willing to give a fresh university graduate three to five million without experience. Mm. So what they can offer is three hundred to four hundred thousand a month. Mm. But you find I've seen a number of youth who have turned down these opportunities, mm. citing uh, inefficiencies, that this money is not enough, you know, to address their needs. Mm. This money, you know, is too little, maybe to the cost of living. Mm. But they forget that the reason why they are offered this mm. little money mm. is to give them a platform to mm. showcase their talents, their skills. Mm. And in the event when they impress their employers, their employers are going to be obliged to increase their salaries, even be promoted. But if you leave initially, are you mm. going to achieve or are you going to enjoy these privileges? So we have a mindset problem in Uganda. Hey. It's one of the biggest reasons why many youth are facing it rough, particularly in the world of the job market. So maybe you can add on from there. Okay, now for me, what I think about this mindset thing eh, yeah. is that um, we have a lot of expectations. Mm. You get it? Mm. So when you're done with your university, you feel like you've struggled to get your papers. Mm. You've, you, you are entitled to something good. Eh? Mm. But then we forget that um, building a career is like farming. farming. You get it? Mm. So now, just like a farmer, mm. the first the first period of time when you're doing your farming is mm. you're watering, you're fertilizing, you're doing all that. Mm. So now, when you just enter the the, the, the professional world mm. as, a, as a newbie, as somebody who is just starting, eh, mm. you don't expect to get something very big. Yeah. So what should you look at? Mm. There are some things that you have to look at. Yeah. For example, you have to know that the first few years, maybe three, mm. they are not for you to make a lot of money getting out of salary. But what are they for? Establishing yourself. Yeah, establishment. Like yeah. growing those roots so that the roots can start growing in the ground. Mm. That means that um, you have to know how to build a network. Mm. You know? Okay, yeah. So they say that, oh, you know, the problem with our, our, our job market here is there's too much nepotism. Mm. You get it? Yeah. Too much nepotism. Mm. People are employing their family members and all that. But then the mistake they make is Networking mm. is the new nepotism. Mm. You get it. Mm. So if you know how to network, mm. if you take networking seriously, you can learn the jobs you want. Mm. Okay? Mm. Because now, like, the reality here in Uganda is you don't expect to apply anywhere as um, a stranger and then they give you a job. That is rare. Mm. So it has to go through connections. Mm. And not family member connections, but mm. networking. networking. Somebody calls you and says, um, Jabel, Kugonza, I heard you good at French. Can yeah. you really do this job? There's an opening somewhere. Yeah. So it is through that network. Yeah. So yeah. That, that mindset yeah. of trying to use the time when you just finished graduating yeah. to establish yourself through yeah. networking and all that then stuff. Then to add on something there, Monsieur Ben, mm. the youth are sh uh, short-term minded individuals that mm. they think about tomorrow, you know, how am I going to get this? And they don't really consider that it takes a lot of time. Yeah. So basically the youth should have this long-term mentality and they should focus more on developing one skills because it is the skills which are paying, right? Yeah. If you don't have skills, then you're not going to be paid. Even the experience alone matters. Even if they offer you to volunteer, volunteer. And even if they are giving you less money, do that. Yeah. So mindset change is one of uh, the pertinent issues that perhaps 
mm. in this country we should address you know if the youth can change their mindset mm. particularly in the way that they look at the job market they should stop looking at it as an utopia mm. where everything is perfect you know they should look at the job market as a phenomenon that presents its own challenges mm. then think about you know how we are going to navigate those challenges especially but develop skills be patient mm. because things that are built on a short term basis do not mm. last that's why you need mm. now to focus more on getting more experience you know skilling yourself more and mm. also networking as ben is saying today mm. today is all about networking if you don't have somebody mm. you know you know a person who knows you personally and so on then you may not reach where you are where you're planning to where, go. where you want to go yeah natural another thing is mpisa mpisa yeah. The word empisa, how do you call it in, in, in English, empisa? Mm. Are, are they morals or... Morals, eh. discipline, discipline. Uh, a lot of ethics and all, all that ethics. stuff. Eh? Mm. Empisa, mm. you get it. And then how does this help? Being disciplined, it helps you with networking. Mm. You know, uh, being a disciplined person, eh? mm. I think, I think from, and also from my experience, mm. The jobs you've gotten, mm. you find that most of the times you are appreciated because of your behavior, behavior yeah. your behavior, mm. your discipline, mm. small things like small keeping things. time. Eh? Mm. You don't even if you're very competent, but you don't keep time. Punctuality. Punctuality. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. You don't greet people. You don't greet people. You know, you you go to a place, a workplace, and then you just pass by everyone. Even if you're very very intelligent and you know your stuff, but mm. discipline. So you find a lot of people. You know. Mm. You also see it. Some yeah, very yeah. many people they they don't they don't give these small things uh, so much value. Mm. Yet, yet, yet they are very very important. Mm. Yeah. So in that way, naturally, you see that um, in this way, when you, when you talk about networking, you see that you cannot do everything alone. In fact, you can't do anything alone. Eh? Mm. We, we need people. So we have a very strong need for people. We have to have that as a mindset. Mm. When you just finished your campus, you need people. Mm. Stay in touch with your friends, the mm. people who the people who you started with, the people who are important. Stay in touch. Mm. Stay in touch. Like be, trying to do things alone somehow makes things very, very hard, you know? Okay. Now I've been looking for you. Mm. I wanted to talk to you about this topic. Mm. But even if I have the equipment, even if I have everything that is necessary and I'm alone, it's hard to do it. Yes, but then I need you. I, I need you so that we can have this discussion. Mm. Because we are having this big problem of employability. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, mm. we go to our next point. Mm. That so, one mm, is going to take us to yet another important aspect in this country, and that is the education system. Yeah. So, there has been... A debate over the years as mm. to whether the current education system is sufficient enough in equipping the students and the learners the necessary skills that mm. are needed in the job world. Mm. Monsieur Ben, you see, the common denominator is always this current education system in Uganda is more theoretical than practical. Yeah. I think that depends from where you're coming yes, from. Yes, 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 yes. But for me particularly, I will say. I've also had voices actually calling upon government to overhaul ah, okay. the entire education system. Mm. On Monday, I was reading uh, an article that appeared in the Observer by Professor Nyeko, mm. a very respected man mm. in uh, ed education administration. Mm. He's talking about a lot of things, but I do agree with some of them, particularly when he talks about let us concentrate on imparting skills. You know, is this education system going to be able to produce a whole rounded person who is going to be able to solve problems in the field of their work. The current education system, in my view, is more based on cramming, making money, mm. passing exams. And for me, I don't believe that we should really base on what someone has done in the exams mm. to promote them. Because many students have not been promoted because mm. of exams. Mm. But people are just learning in order to cram. So education system in Uganda it has been kind of monetarized. It's all about making money. Yeah. And at the end of the day, people are not getting the necessary skills that they do need. So in my view, I believe the education system has also played a very big part in the youth plight in this country, especially when it comes to 
the field of employment, you find someone has studied a practical course, but they have no idea whatsoever about the practicability of this course mm. in the job market. You know, if it is journalism, someone is learning about, you know, camera, theoretically, you yeah. know, this person has never accessed a camera physically. So how is he going to do the photography? The, pra so, the practical side of the The practical education. side. So I believe from I'm coming from a background of languages and pro probably history, we need to equip our students more with practical skills. Let us revise the current education system in this country so that we can be able to produce people who are going to be able to solve problems, you know, practically, you know, yeah. having skills. Let mm. us also consider co-curricular skills. Let us consider music, you know. Let us, you know, equip these students with more skills than mm. the theory. So, I, th I, th I think that I think it is changing now. They are trying to, the, 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 the government mm. is doing its best to, mm. to change a few things. Eh? Mm. So now you can compare around right now the current state status quo of the education compared to the one 10 years back. You see, mm. some things have been changed. But you see, mm. when you look at our education system right now, mm. you will see that um, it is actually, it is something which is colonial. Mm, colonial it yeah. is a colonial system whereby Omuzungu, the white man, uh, started this system because it needed workers. Mm. The system needed workers. Mm. So the way our system is, you can even see it, the way it, 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 it looks like right now, it produces people mm. who are going to work for someone. For someone. You get it? Mm. So it does not produce people who are going to solve a problem, mm. like a serious problem mm. in our society. So mm. that is why when you're done with your university, the next thing is, who is going to hire me? Mm. You get it? Mm. Not what solution do I have? Mm. What am I going to solve? Mm. You see? Mm. So now, that is the mindset that needs okay, to be changed. I want to come in also. You get it? Yeah. Uh, I saw the current high school curriculum. I, I've seen a number of adjustments there. And high you school. can see your yeah, high school adjustment. Secondary. Yeah, secondary. And what they are trying to do, they are trying to incorporate in more of practical, a practical orientation eh? mm. uh, in uh, imparting those skills and knowledge to the mm. students. They want to be more student-centered, which mm. is okay, but I think we shall have to evaluate it with time to see how it is going to impact mm. the job market. Mm. But going back to what Professor Nyeko was proposing, he talked about a number of things. He talks about uh, merging the O and A level curriculums. In my view, I don't believe that will be sustainable. Then also he's talking about scrapping off senior for examinations. Then he's also talking about specializing at university. Now imagine mm. you have studied from senior one to senior six. Mm. You know, you have studied very many subjects. And now your area of spe specialization will be at university. For mm. me, I think it should be the other way around. A student is learning 14 subjects at senior one. For what? And at senior five and senior six, they are going to only specialize in three. At university, they are not specializing in anything. So I think there are a lot of inefficiencies in this education system. But I've seen uh, there have also been some inroads being made, especially in the private sector. The private sector, they have understood mm. that they need now to equip their learners, their students, with a more practical approach. Mm. And that's why you see they're investing more mm. in uh, imparting skills practically. Mm. Mm. Public universities are a little bit lagging behind. Mm. So I believe we should really not necessarily overhaul the education system, but mm. we should make necessary adjustments. Look here. A few days ago, my professor called me. Mm. Actually, a few weeks ago. She called me and there is a project mm. that she's conducting. It is a research project. Mm. Now, that project is centered on uh, traditional birth attendants. What is that? Okay. Traditional birth attendants are these people who help uh, women to give mm. birth at the local level and so on. Eh? But midwife? But, yeah, but midwife at, yeah. at the village level. Yeah, yeah I think it was made, uh, it is unofficial currently. Mm. Yeah, the government uh, criminalized it, I think. Mm. But we are also interested in knowing about the Caesarian section. Yeah. Now, let me come in here uh, from a historian perspective eh? mm. to show you how our education system is colonial. Mm. Now, my professor was interested in knowing more about the Caesarian section. There are very few Ugandans who know about the Caesarian section. Now, the Caesarian section, these were surgical operations that were carried out by the Banyoro in uh, the 1890s during Kabalega. Yeah. When a woman failed to produce naturally, yeah. they would cut. Yeah. They would cut her, remove the baby. C-section. C-section, yeah. Cut, remove the baby, and 
both the life of the mother and the baby would be saved, right? Mm. Not even the imperialists were doing that in 1890. Nobody mm. was doing it in the world, apart from Banyoro. Mm. So we went there to Kiriandongo in a village where this was done, and we asked a lot of imp- information pertaining mm. the Caesarian section. I can tell you, this information is nowhere in the Ugandan curriculum. We are teaching our students things that happened in Europe 500 years ago, which are not going to help us. Napoleon. Napoleon, okay. <laughs> Okay, yes. Napoleon. yes, but this information is very important for us to know about our heritage, our identity, that Africa was a civilized continent even before the coming in of the Europeans. Mm. African, Africa has been made to look like it did not have a history before the coming in of what? Of the colonialists. So what am I trying to say? That what you are teaching our students is not helping them. Mm. So that's why I base on, uh, you know, this uh, experience that I got from the C-section, that Harvard is having all the information regarding mm. the C-section, but nobody has it here in, in Uganda. Yeah. So what are we teaching our students? We are teaching them Mississippi, things that are not going to help them. Canada and Canada stuff like that. And, 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 yeah, stuff like that. When will you go to Canada? You know? So let us teach things that can help us. But, do, but, but do, you think, do you think our education system is... Okay, our education here is uh, totally useless. Like, no, it is what, not useless. what we learned. It is not useless. But what we are saying, it is... It is Insufficient. It has its own inadequacies. It is not and sufficient. Again, Sus- you cannot tell me in a changing Sus- world, ah. eh, mm. we are in the 21st century, right? Everything is changing rapidly. And for you, you don't adapt. Meaning mm. you are going to go on a downward spiral. You get? Mm. Because this is 2023. And for you, your mm. curriculum was adapted in the 1990s. Mm. And countries are always you know, amending their curriculum, basing on the changes that are happening on the international scene. But here in Uganda... What you are having is you still have an old system that is colonial based. I don't know what you know what really inspires these people not to teach Ugandan skills that are going to enable them. In anyway. China, students are learning with AI. You know? Anyway, we have a solution here. Eh? Uh. The solution is now we live in an information era. Uh. So now you cannot you cannot now you, you you don't have to blame the education system totally because mm. now you can access information. Mm. You get it. So I think it's mostly about mindset change because the information is now there. Mm. You want to learn about you want to learn French, for example. Mm. YouTube is there. There's reading material. You can access what you need so that you learn. But the problem for me I think is the the mindset. Because mm. now we live in the information era. Mm. You want to learn about engines. There is enough information about engines. You get it. Mm. But then the problem is, we don't know. Mm. We, our, our mindset is still in the other old, old, old curriculum, old system. Old system. Uh, we are not, we are not solution based. Mm. Okay, I believe, <laughs> and again, it starts from okay. There are things that individuals have to do. Mm. That one I do acknowledge, but also the system also has to design it. That is, this is a deliberate policy from government. Right? Mm. Because if it doesn't come from up there, then this is an era which is literally dominated by... It is, it is very complicated at the end of the mm. day. So if we don't structure it in a way that is going to benefit our people, because that's what other countries are doing. You know, mm. They want to see their population, they want to see their people advancing, they want to see their people solving problems. So in Uganda, it has not been the case. Mm. So at the end of the day, mindset change is important individuals also they have to put in you know they have to invest in you know mm. you have to look for those skills if they are not being offered anywhere mm. they have to be patient and so on but also we should acknowledge you know that uh, we need to be all round at the mm. end of the day we need to be all round mm. uh, just as albert einstein says it that uh, everyone is a genius mm. but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree then mm. it will live all its life Thinking that it is stupid. It is, uh, so, yeah, yeah, everyone has diverse capabilities. Mm. So the education system here should really look into that. You know, mm. how do we produce all round students? All round students. Yeah. And then mm. also also knowing that um your degree does not determine your destiny. Mm. You know? Mm. It's just there to just to kujako how do you call it? Just to it's starter mm. where you can start from and learn other things afterwards mm. because our parents used to tell us mm. education never ends. Mm. But then right now it is like after getting your degree, you, you're done with education. Yet it never ends. Okay. So now in the information era where we live now, it is even it is it is even much, much 
uh, it's much, much favorable ra- right now that you can learn anything. Languages, you can learn uh, computer skills. You find people who did literature, but now they are doing things which are in the field of biology. Mm. You get it. Mm. So now we, we, we just need to just change our mindset. The mindset. And then another thing is, now you can see the consequences of our education system. Like people are running away. Mm. Mm-hmm. They are going to other countries. other countries. So that means, they call it brain drain. Eh? Brain drain. That means right now, in Uganda, we, no? we, Richard, we shall have a, a deficiency. It, can be, it may even be a crisis, maybe some, some time later in the years, yeah. where we don't have skilled labor. Mm. Every one who thought they were good, they So labor the is part of what we're exporting to yeah, the world. So now, so now, this happened during the Amin era. History tells us that during the Amin era, Obote, like professional people used to run away, fearing for their lives to work outside. So, yeah, political reasons. Yeah. But so, today it is more of social economic. Yeah, you see? So now the same thing happened, where by the richer time, where you have to import labor, and that would be expensive. Expensive, yeah. So what should we do in order to keep our skilled labor? Because... Human resource is the best best resource. Yeah. But if we have our human resource running away in the country, then who is going to solve these problems? Yeah, we have to address the reasons why yeah. they are leaving so, the country. It is a very it is a very very huge debate. Eh? But Jabel, um, we may not finish it. We, we, we may have to do another video. Yeah, we shall start from there next time. Uh, but we... but uh, I I got I was lucky. I got a chance to find you here so that we can just have a talk. Right, chinko zebulunjinyo. Je suis content de, oui. de, de t'avoir rencontré ici. Oui. Parce que tu es occupé, tu es occupé, tu es toujours là dans le club de France avec tes amis là. Oui, oui. J'ai... Mais c'est un grand plaisir. It's a, it's a pleasure to have uh, been able to discuss this. Mm. And we are going to discuss even more. Oui, you get oui, it. oui, merci beaucoup, monsieur mm. Ben, pour de m'avoir pour une autre fois. Et j'espérais qu'il y aura une autre occasion <laughs> où uh, nous allons discuter pour... L'autre sujet qui concerne les personnes jeunes. Eh? Mm. Oui, merci beaucoup pour cette opportunité. Yeah. Oui. Oui, Non, Oui, par exemple. Je suis à côté de la Le problème est que c'est un problème maintenant. Parce que imagine now, everyone, like right, every, every university now graduates a year. If you, if you, if you add those numbers mm. by year, you find that they are busy. Not all resource. Mm, you see, it's a very big problem. So we shall have to talk about yeah. this thing. But more, also, like you can also share discuss. with us your thoughts about this yeah. topic at hand. You could yeah. go on our social media platforms. You can go on Nicole Vita, Ekela, Ugo, Ekel Vita, Vita, Ugo, on Twitter. Oh, but also on YouTube, you yeah. know. YouTube, on Instagram, this very video, Facebook. So you can go to mm. the comment section and tell us generally what you think about the youth plight in this country, especially when it comes to employment and employability. Where is the problem? Because now that is the biggest topic in this country. Yeah. Many youth are not meeting the expectations. They go to school 18 years, but at the end of the day, you know, they meet a dead end. Voilà, monsieur. Oui. Monsieur. Alors, c'est un très grand plaisir. Oui, oui, oui. Et, mais on va, on va se voir. Eh? Oui, oui. On va se voir encore. Oui. Eh? Plus we, we are going to see each other again. I'll come back. Oui, Les, oui. Les Today I just bumped into you, but I'll come. Yeah. Then we keep talking. Okay, we monsieur. discuss this. Merci beaucoup. The words that you're hearing here, they're not from wise people. We're just discussing. Okay. Yeah. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Merci.